haben diesmal den ersten internationalen Eck beim fünften Element. Ich hoffe, ihr habt wieder alle ausgeschlafen und seid dabei. Ähm, da ich kein Englisch kann, macht das Ganze ein gutes Savage und ähm, er legt jetzt auch gleich richtig los. Was zieht's? Also, wir haben Far Romans von Organized Confusion hier. Just introduce yourself to the. What's up, people? I'm Farrell March, the 13, the unprecedented MC from the infamous Organized Confusion out here in Berlin at the Pfaffenberg. Chilling about to do this show tonight. Just in the hip hop scene, you know? Okay, um, I really got no real questions, so we just gotta improvise a little. Okay, let's start up real fast. Uh, what do you think? Um, do you think this whole commercial hip hop thing uh, is like opening doors for the underground hip hop or even being a wall to the underground hip hop? And do you think it's, it's healthy or it's like more like poison? I think that in ways it's healthy because there's a lot of underground artists who are whack to me. And there's a lot of you know people who are above ground and who are commercially accessible who are good, you know. But it's also a lot that's whack. What hurts hip hop on the whole is when you know something becomes accessible and they run it in the ground and the whole creativity of hip hop itself on a music level becomes stagnated and it stays in one place and they keep recycling the same style and the same art and the same groups and the same you know type of samples but in in the long run what that does is it undoubtedly starts a renaissance of underground artists again and independent records again what you see happening you know labels are like we don't want to sign something if it doesn't have a radio appeal we don't want to sign something if it doesn't have a, a puffy-esque type of feel to it so what happens is the artists go in their labs whatever they can find and they start putting out their own records again and, and this is what you have you have a whole surge of artists coming independent trying to be different from the next and you have to create creativity surfacing again you know in my point of view and on that level you don't have to sell a million records you know to be a star in the underground and, and now kids are learning how to make money from it by doing their own albums and you know merchandising their own t-shirts and selling their own tapes and that's basically what you gotta do you know, so I don't think it's hurting. How it is hurting, in a sense, is that the audience who are not familiar with hip hop, they get uh, blocked out from really intelligent and creative, dope rap music because the, the media, you know, keeps recycling, you know, the normal thing that's selling. That's the only thing that hurts, you know. But I see a lot of uh, dope underground artists coming up. For example, together. Uh, to leave, basically, I was saying that the whole tour of mass influence, awesomeness, I am mighty myself, you know, taking it back home to um, Black Star and uh, Polyrhythmatics and uh, so Menelik, the whole uh, raucous movement, the whole independent movement, you know. Uh, they're making their own surge without the use of having to sweat major labels. And it's definitely going to make artists that are, you know, commercial have to step their game up because they're going to see the stakes it's raised. And, uh, you know, the artists, you know, on the underground are going to have to step their game up. So I think it's good right now. Okay. So, um, just let, let the people know basically, like, uh, how you started rhyming or when you started and how you developed your style because um, in the Earth magazine, I don't know, there was an interview with Gold State Warriors, Rez Cat Sophia and Exhibit and Rez Cat and Sophia, they said, like Rez Cat, he personally, he said he, he can make every style, like he can figure out any style from Method Man to everybody, but he said uh, at your point, like he said, follow months to me, he's the dopest MC, I can't even figure out how he's doing that and so I, I just want to know how you how was the evolution of your style and how you started and where you get your ideas for like these slows and like your rhyme patterns and everything? Well, basically, I think we all have computers in our head. 
mine was programmed at an early age because of the influence that I had growing up. One of the, I had multiple musical influence. I mean, one of my brothers listened to Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin. One of my sisters listened to the Jackson Five. My parents listened to jazz and gospel. So as I evolved up and hearing different musics, I was open to all types of uh, notations and, and rhythms and fluctuations and sounds and, and notes. And when I started listening to music myself, I first got into jazz. And I took a liking to Coltrane and Monk. And I was like, you know, if I'm a rhyme, you know, I want my flows to be as abstract as that. You know, I really don't have no style, which is, you know, kind of confusing at times because people want to identify with something. I always try to come with something different every time. And, um, you know, just starting to rhyme, I was like, I don't want my peers to be able to say, or my fans to be able to say, I got his style down pat, and there's no need to buy any of my records anymore. You know, I look back at some of the styles that I did, and I was, you know, I say to myself, if I would have stuck with this one style, you know, I could have been a more broad of an artist because people would identify with him out of gases and prisoners of war and the first album. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, but I chose to like change and just be experimental with, with style. And I think that's broadened my horizon as a as a as a lyricist. But I mean, how do you write your lyrics? Do you like um, sometimes break it down like in uh, mathematical, like uh, in in numbers and stuff like that, or you just uh, like write it in your mind, or you just go down the paper and just how you feel on that beat? I, I don't have the method. You know, um, I could be on the plane, a whole rhyme could hit me at one time, and I'll go fanatic to get a pen. Or I could, I could write a line, and then a month later write a line. I, I really don't have no method. Most of the times, the best stuff that I felt, I freestyle it, you know, in the room with the beat. And then, you know, memorize it and then I add on to it. You know, it's not that technical. When I first started, it was real technical, like line for line, and I would analyze each line and make sure it, it was mathematically correct. I think then I evolved into a situation on the second album where I, I basically, like, tossed the paper aside and I was more like free, sledding the beat, you know, drive me like 13. You know, and then write it down. And then now, you know, the reason why I moved, I, I took this challenge to do this solo project. Because I'm feeling like an MC again. Whereas when I first started, I would have like five, ten books of rhymes. And as you become an artist, you, you lose that. And you just, you know, write for records. Now I feel I'm becoming that MC type of kid. So I'm like hungry in that sense. But I really don't have no method the way I write. Okay. This is a whole different question. You know, um, the only people MC wise that I can like, um, that I think it can relate to your flaws, I think is AC Law, Mike and I, and Children of Empire. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know CVE. Mm -hmm. They're quite fresh. I mean, and they're from the West Coast, and to me it seems like they don't get get like the props they deserve because they're from the West Coast. I mean, you got like way more underground buzz than AC Long, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, what do you think? Why is this coastal thing still existing? I mean, if you go through Project Load, everybody in the Project Load is like throwing up W's and stuff like this because they feel like the East Coast is like, like holding them away, so. Yeah, I agree with that. I think hip hop has always been territorial. I'm from Queens in New York City. When I was in high school, all the kids from the Bronx and Brooklyn, when I used to rhyme, they used to say, no way you're from Queens. You gotta be from the Bronx. No, I'm not from the Bronx, I'm from Queens. No way you're from Queens. So it was this whole thing where Queens felt like the way LA was feeling at the time. We was like shut out, you know. Back in the days when we was throwing jams and I would come and tell people, yo, they had a jam around my way. They don't jam in Queens, they jam in the Bronx. You know, so 
I'm like, yo, we went into hip hop too in Queens. And I kind of feel that the West Coast felt the same way that they wasn't getting any respect for what they added to hip hop. As far as uh, freestyle fellowship goes, when we signed to Hollywood Basic, we had a party and that's when I first had met them, you know. But as far as my flows, you know, they was developed, you know, in the basement, trying not to sound like everyone else. Okay. And naturally, and I'm pretty sure Mike Nine and, and AC alone, that's how they develop their styles too. You hear everybody doing the same thing. And you're just an individual that's like, I don't want to sound like that. You know, but, but you have to be a have a persona that you know you're gonna get ridiculed cool for being different. If, if you're in school and you wear different clothes from the rest, people are gonna point you out. And it's the same thing with hip hop. When we came out, people was like, they're weird. You know what I'm saying? What type of hip hop is that? Uh, last piece of chicken. You know what I'm saying? Just we try to take a different approach to it because that's who we are. Not to not to gain any fame, but just being true to who I am until this day. You know, being a thug and being a gangster is and being a player is and why would I rap about that? Okay. Um, you you just told me that you're about to bring out a solo album, so just just let me know what it's all about. Is it any uh, guest features on there or just let them know about the whole thing? I mean, in my eyes right now, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of hip hop. I buy people's albums. I go to Fat Beats and I purchase artists' albums. I collect um, rap albums. I collect some funk and soul and jazz and I support it and I listen to it. In my opinion, not to be you know, braggadocious or anything, but this this up and coming album so far it seems like it's gonna be one of my favorite albums. I'm gonna have like my favorite artist on the album, you know, which is probably gonna feature O C, which is gonna feature Common Sense, which is gonna feature Black Thought, Brass Cats, Sphere, Prince, you know what I'm saying? And it's not gonna be like it's gonna be a lot of songs, but it's not gonna be cluttered. But features, the songs are going to make sense that I do with these people. They're not just going to be on there to say that, look, I got um, Black Thought on my album. You know, I, I want the songs to make sense. And the whole story of the book and the album. And, um, you know, we've organized it three albums, you know, and similar to Tribe. We just been together so long. I just was like, yo, we need to take a break. You know what I'm saying? But you still exist as organized confusion? Yeah.